Hey guys, my name is Daichi. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I want to react to the video called 8 Things I Wish I Knew Before Traveling to Tokyo by Shelby Church. And Shelby Church is one of my favorite YouTubers and she talks about tech, investment, real estate, Airbnb like that. So I highly recommend you to subscribe her channel. So without further ado, let's get started. As you guys probably know if you watched my last video, I recently made my first trip to Japan. It was super different from anywhere I've traveled and really, really cool, would highly recommend. Since it was so different, there were some things I wish I knew beforehand and that in general, I think are just good to know if you're going to make a trip there. So today we are going to go over all the things that you need to know if you're going to Japan. The first is that they don't have Uber here, at least not the way that we have it in America. They do have the more expensive black cars, but you're not gonna find UberX here. They have a really good public transportation system, so you might not even need this, but I did find at certain points I did want to call a car. And instead of using Uber, I used an app called Didi. This was cheaper than the Ubers there, and it's pretty much the same thing. It calls a car to you, but they're about the UberX equivalent. It basically just calls you a taxi, but you pay within the app so you don't have to use cash or anything. Thing, which is really nice. There were a few times where I was far enough from a train station hauling a bunch of bags that it was just easier to call a car. So I was really glad that I discovered this app on like the third day of the trip. So while you most likely will be able to get by just using the Metro, it's good to have this app downloaded just in case you need a car because DD is cheaper than Uber and I found it was just a little bit easier. So would recommend. Honestly, I would recommend having them both just in case. One yes, Uber X isn't operated in Japan. Instead, we use taxis and DD Rideshare is useful to call taxis. So if you want to use taxi, I highly recommend you to download DD Rideshare. However, public transportation is pretty good in Japan. So chances are you will never use taxis because it is quite expensive compared with uh, public transportation. And personally, I've lived in Japan for more than two decades and I used taxis for only five times or so. Kind of basic thing I wish I knew before I got here is that people walk on the left side of the street. When I first got here, I was so confused why I kept running into people. And then I noticed on the ground, you can see the arrows clearly showing you to walk on the left side of the street, walkway, whatever. In the US, it's kind of like you stay to the right or honestly, people just go wherever. Here, it's very clearly you walk to the left. So that's definitely good to know. It makes it a lot easier to get around, trust me. I was so used to staying to the right, it took me like two whole days to notice all these signs. So now you don't have to learn this one the hard way and run into a bunch of people you know to just stay to the left. This topic is kind of tricky because people walk on the left side of the street in Tokyo whereas people walk on the right side of the street in Osaka. So. Keep in mind. Next is probably one of the most helpful things I had on the trip, and that was the Google Translate app. This has like saved me going to restaurants and stuff like that. So it's just a free app. So to use the app, you basically just line up what you want to translate as if you're taking a photo, and then it will live translate it for you. It's pretty crazy the first time you use it, I'm not gonna lie. It feels like very futuristic. I will say it's not a perfect translation. Sometimes it will bounce between a few different translations, and sometimes it's like, really doesn't make sense. It has been really helpful for food menus though. It can generally do a good job translating that. It's also very handy in grocery stores or drug stores where a lot of stuff is not in English. Like this packaging, there's nothing really in English. So Google Translate really comes in handy here. Sometimes it doesn't work on these more like scripts fonts, but on a lot of things it does work and it really came in handy. So before I went on this trip, a few people told me that in Japan, they speak really, really good English. And so I went on this trip thinking that, and I didn't really find that to be that true. It actually was really hard to communicate with people. As someone who really doesn't know any other languages, I'm grateful they know any English at all. Like, I would say that's a good thing to know, like definitely have Google Translate and don't expect everyone to fully understand you. You'll be able to communicate, but it's not gonna be, you know, as easy as when you're like, in LA or something like that. So that being said, everyone I met there was so nice and so willing to try and communicate with us and try and understand us, which is all you can ask for. I expected some people to, you know, maybe be annoyed or like in a hurry just going about their lives, but 
I was actually like amazed how helpful and patient people were. But long story short, just download Google Translate because it will make it a lot easier. <laughs> yes, Google Translate is very useful. When I was in college, I took French class and yeah, I always rely on Google Translate to do assignment. So it was kind, kind of cheating, but it worked very well. So I highly, hi, I highly recommend you to use Google Translate. In terms of whether or not Japanese speak English, you can't expect us to speak English, but it doesn't mean we can't help you. So if you are in trouble, you should, you should rely on Japanese and we are willing to help you. Okay, next. Well, I thought the food was so good. I will say the breakfast food was a little bit limited. So I'm a big breakfast person. I love breakfast. And the first day I went to go get breakfast, I noticed a lot of places weren't open yet. It just seems like breakfast isn't really like that important. So it's going to be fish and rice, stuff like that, which I love, but to be honest, I don't love that at like 8 in the morning. It's not that there's no breakfast food at all. It's just that I felt like I kind of had to go out of my way to find it. I'm sure some people don't even mind that at all and it's really not a huge deal. I probably just would have packed some oatmeal or something like that that I typically like to eat anyway if I had known that beforehand. I'm sure a lot of people think this was maybe kind of weird or random, but I actually totally would have done this if I knew the breakfast food was going to be like more like fish or like to me lunch food i would have just brought some oatmeal some instant oats super easy to do and if anyone's actually going to do this i'm not sure if you'd be able to bring it in a ziploc bag like that but if you had pre-sealed instant oats from the store that should be fine so if you're really into breakfast maybe bring some granola bars or something like that since i am such a breakfast person i really did go out of my way to research and find some good spots so if you're also a big breakfast person and you're headed there i'll put them in the description box if you want to check these ones out because they were really good the food is so good but they aren't that big on breakfast generally restaurants are open from 11 a.m or 10 a.m except for fast food restaurants like McDonald's, Sukiya, Matsunoya, like that. This is because Japanese prefer light meal for breakfast, so we have breakfast at home or just buy some food at convenience stores. The next thing that I think is really good to know is that there are still a lot of places that are cash only. So I would definitely recommend getting some cash out because at some point, chances are, you will end up somewhere that is cash only and honestly, a lot of the really good spots were cash only, so get cash out. Especially restaurants and just little hole in the wall spots that you're probably gonna wanna eat. So it's definitely good to get some cash out and keep cash with you. I actually pretty much only used cash the whole time and in using cash for everything, I learned the next thing you want to know before you go. And that is when you pay with cash at a restaurant, rather than just leaving the money on the table, you're supposed to give the money directly to your server. So in the US, it's totally fine and normal to pay with cash and then leave it on the table and bounce. But in Japan, if you're paying with cash, you actually want to take this to them. It's considered rude if you leave it on the table. I didn't really know this until the second day. I didn't read it online or anything, but I learned from other people that were traveling that this is what you do. So it's definitely good to know because you don't want to offend them. This video was uploaded two years ago and since then, cashless payment started to be widely adapted in Japan. So, and personally, I don't use cash for more than two years and yeah, you don't have to have cash in my opinion. If you go to a small local restaurant, Perhaps that restaurant doesn't accept cashless payment, but don't worry, you can cash out at convenience stores and there are convenience stores all over the place. So yeah, you have, you have nothing to worry about. The next one that's definitely good to know before you get here is that it's not customary to tip. So it definitely feels weird at first to eat at a restaurant and not tip, especially because everywhere I went, the service was really, really good. People are paid more of a living wage and so they don't rely on tips. Not only is it just not normal there, but it can also be considered an insult. So you definitely don't want to do it. On the plus side, that does save you some money. So that is nice. So I'm sure this but one, no one will be upset to hear. Just don't forget to tip again when you get back home. 
Oh, also, I promise this is the last thing, but I found actually great food in train stations, which I would not have expected, so that was really convenient. And good to know if you're traveling, you actually can find really good food while you are doing so. Yeah, so Japanese society doesn't have custom of tipping, but it doesn't mean tipping is regarded as rude or insult insulting. We just don't have custom of tipping. Is that there are no garbage cans anywhere and somehow no litter either. Okay, so this is a bit of an exaggeration. There aren't no garbage cans at all, but there are significantly less than in the US. So here in America, there's like three trash cans within 50 feet of each other on the street. And this is pretty common. There are generally trash cans kind of all over the place. So normally if I get something to eat or drink that's kind of fast food, I'll just kind of eat it or drink it while I walk. But in Japan, they don't really eat or drink on the go. They usually sit down to consume whatever it is. So there's no need for garbage cans everywhere. So it's kind of weird if we go there because we're like, wait, where are all the garbage cans? Like you don't really notice it until you get there. It is good to know though, to plan out when you're gonna throw things away so you don't end up holding something for like an hour. I just found that I would sit down and eat or drink and then throw it away so I didn't have to like hold on to it for a while. This difference is very interesting. Yes, there is no garbage can on the street in Japan, but I see many people having Starbucks frappuccino or coffee, so, and I don't know where they throw it away. So I think it's a good idea to install garbage cans all over the place. The thing I wish I knew was to just get a three-day metro pass. I just got one-way tickets the whole time and it was such a waste of time and money. So each day I would use the train five to six times and I bought a one-way ticket each time. A one-way ticket is between 170 to 400 yen depending on where you go. And on average, I spent six to eight dollars per day on train tickets, which ended up being $24 for three days. Instead, I could have bought a three-day pass for 13 US dollars. So Basically, if you think you're gonna take the metro more than four or five times in three days, which you will, most likely, then you might as well just get the three-day pass so you don't have to go to a kiosk every time and get a new ticket. I don't know why I did this. Um, definitely shouldn't have. There's also a JR rail pass, which is around $250 for a week. Sometimes this is a good deal, but sometimes it's not. So let's say you're just traveling pretty short distances for an entire week. You're better off just doing the three-day pass twice and paying $26 than doing the full JR pass for $250. If you're taking the train across like the entire country, this might make more sense. But if you're just staying within Tokyo, it probably makes more sense to just do multi-day passes. Yeah, this is very good advice. Just buying a multiple day ticket saves you a lot of money and time. So buying a train ticket every time you use train is annoying. So I highly, highly recommend you to buy a multiple day ticket. That's all guys. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.